This video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. Another year, another baseline iPad that basically looks the same compared to the last. But is that really true? Well, on the surface, absolutely it is. If you handed me these two right here, this is the eighth gen, this is the ninth gen, and you asked me to tell them apart in an instant, I could not to save my life. But there are some notable, more subtle hardware changes that I do wanna to touch on before we jump into the general performance test that we're going to be doing today. For starters, the base capacity of the iPad 9th gen is 64 gigabytes compared to the iPad 8th gen and previous models, 32 gigs. This is no longer acceptable. I think Apple squeezed, you know, 32 gigs in as long as they could. But yeah, I think they finally acknowledged that this is like the base acceptable amount of storage for most people. Even if they are doing a lot of web-based tasks, thankfully now you have an extra 32 gigs to store local files like photos, movies and music and other media like that. They have also enabled True Tone on a pretty much unchanged 10 point two inch display with the same overall color quality resolution, the same air gap, which is, you know, not great, but at least it's easier to replace the glass compared to other iPads with laminated glass. Um, but yeah, True Tone is great because it will adjust the color temperature of your display to fit the room. So you're getting a less blue looking display with the eighth gen and previous gen models. You just, I don't know, like if you compare the two side by side, this does look bluer. It doesn't look as color accurate. And I'm sure this is a little easier on your eyes as well, because I think like an excessive amount of blue light all the time is not good. Um, but don't quote me on that. It just is more of an aesthetic thing, and it is a nice addition, even though I feel like it's more of a software tweak, if anything. The final subtle hardware difference I wanna point out is in the front-facing camera quality or hardware. Um, the iPad 8th gen and previous models have had a 1.2 megapixel potato quality VGA camera. Uh, and then the new 9th gen uh, adopted the front-facing camera found in the iPad Pro and the iPad mini 6th gen. It's 12 megapixels, it's ultra wide, and it's used primarily for Apple's center stage FaceTime or video call feature, which is super cool because it tracks you around the room and makes video calls a lot more interactive. However, um, when it comes to just regular selfies, I think that the software sort of crops in. So the image quality isn't like miles better, but it's definitely better compared to just the potato quality you're getting with iPad 8th gen and previous gen models. It looks a lot cleaner on here, and if you're somebody who's taking selfies with your iPad, yeah, I mean, I guess it's better, but center stage is the main feature with this new uh, front-facing camera. So having gone over the more subtle hardware changes, now let's go over the less subtle hardware change or jump between the two tablets, and that is with processor. The iPad 8th gen is equipped with the A12, whereas the iPad 9th gen has the A13, which is by no means a new chip, but it is definitely more powerful, although it shares the same processor architecture. So it's gonna be interesting to see how much more powerful it is in practice. Uh, and also for your information, this chip was also found in the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro series, whereas the A12 is found in the iPhone 10S and the 10R series. And yeah, with all that said, let's jump into this performance test here. Before we start, I want you to note the battery life on here. Um, I did charge these both to 100% and I just turned them on before I started shooting this video, but the iPad 8th gen has already depreciated or like depreciated, has gone down 2%, whereas the iPad 9th gen is still at 100%. I have had this device for a year, so there may be some battery degradation involved, or maybe the A13 is just that much more efficient, who knows, but we will see what this number is at at the end. But the first thing I'm gonna do is power these tablets off so we can do a boot test, just to see how much of a difference the A13 makes. Um, or maybe the storage on the inside, we can test that too later with Antutu. So I'm gonna power these off and then power them back on. All right, let's boot these up here. I made sure to close all the apps before shutting them down and they are running the same firmware. I'll show you this in a minute. So yeah, let's uh, power these on. Okay, so I actually tested this before I got on camera and the eighth gen boots a tad bit quicker by a second or two. I don't know if it has to do with the smaller amount of storage, but I have the same stuff installed on here for the most part. Again, it's the same firmware, so that's interesting. Obviously, this doesn't translate to better overall performance because the A13 on paper should perform you know, substantially better. But yeah, that's interesting nonetheless. Let me actually enter my passcode here so we can look at the firmware and also test out Touch ID. All right, so here's your quick Touch ID test in three, two, one. The same, you can't even tell the difference. Let's do it again. Yeah, okay, so there you go. There's Touch ID for you, no difference at all. Let's go into settings and also uh, check out the about page just to confirm that we are running the same firmware 15.0, the same build as well. 
uh, which is 19A344. Uh, so there you are, same firmware. Um, yeah, let's start um, by just going over some animations, seeing how things look, um, because the GPU in the A13 is technically better, but does that translate to like better animations? We'll have to see. Starting with the notification dropdown, I am not noticing any major differences. Here's Control Center. Oops, now we're doing Spotlight. Let's compare Spotlight. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any major difference there, which is a good thing if you're thinking about buying an 8th gen or if you have one, um, because I think with the A10 Fusion in the 7th gen, you could notice a bit of a difference in terms of GPU performance. Here's the multitasking window animation here. I can also do the app library one. Uh, yeah, I am not noticing any differences in terms of animations here. I think that both sort of meet the minimum requirement of performance to push iPadOS decently on this iPad. All right, so having tested out some system animations, now let's launch some apps that you might know or use on a daily basis so we can see what launch time is like and also what the experience is like between these two. I anticipate with some apps we'll see minimal differences, but with others, we might see some performance jumps with the A13 here. So I have a list of apps that I'm gonna open up here, so I'm gonna just stare at my iPad mini while I do this. The first app I'm gonna open up is the news app through the widget here, which I have right here with the gadgets topic, three, two, one. And it loaded up a little bit quicker here. I don't know if the modem or the cellular or the, excuse me, the Wi-Fi connection in here is a little bit better, but it might be, or maybe the processor makes it faster. So we can scroll through here and just um, look at this article. It is a little bit different here. So how about we actually go to News Plus and see if it loads the same page. So yeah, a little bit quicker here. I think we can also go to All Titles. Once again, just a tad bit quicker here as well. All right, so next up, let's open up the next app, which is camera. And we're gonna flip to the selfie camera because, um, you know, obviously the back facing cameras are facing the table in three, two, one. Okay, so that focus first, meaning the app may have opened quicker. We can switch here. Okay, we can switch back. It's a little bit quicker to switch on the um, iPad 8th gen here, which is interesting. Maybe the higher tech in the camera takes an extra second. I don't know, um, but we can take a picture as well. Um, although I'm covering up the camera here. Uh, same there, we can open up the picture as well. Boom, we can go back. Do that again. Yeah, same, uh, and as you can see here, the camera quality is a bit better with this 12 megapixel shooter, even though it is a little more cropped in, yeah. Um, it's better for Zoom calls and just selfies and such. All right, onto the next app here, the App Store. I find this app to be a challenge for some older devices, or at least it shows the disparity between a uh, process for performance. So uh, let's open it up in three, two, one. And it opened up a little quicker on the iPad 8th gen. Maybe once again, the A12 is meeting that threshold to where the only thing limiting the speed of the app opening is the internet. And you know what? Just because I'm just being paranoid, let's actually check the Wi-Fi network. Yep, we're on the same network, so okay. Um, let's launch that again and see if it makes a difference. I will do that again. Three, two, one. Yeah, so about the same in terms of loading speed. At this point, it seems like the internet, once again, is the limiting factor of the bottleneck, which is great. Um, but let's actually scroll through here. Um, we can actually go to games, maybe. Okay, so that opened up a little bit quicker there. We can load maybe the Geometry Dash um, app page a little quicker there. So maybe opening the app is the same, but then loading different pages might be quicker with the A13. Um, sometimes not, though. But yeah, the overall like experience though is very identical. This isn't a reason to obviously get the ninth gen if you have the eighth gen, just because the app store loads quicker. But nonetheless, it's interesting. Next up, let's open up the YouTube app. Hopefully I have the same like account logged in here. So it's gonna like load the same page in three, two, one. All right, good. A little quicker here, we can load the Pixel 6 video. I'm actually gonna lower the volume all the way. Oh, it's already down. Here we are. So we're watching the video at the same time. It loaded at the same time. Again, I think that the internet at this point is mostly a bottleneck when it comes to these everyday apps because again, the A12 still does a great job, which is great news for iPad 8th gen users. Let's open up. How about um, the subscription feed? And we can open up uh, heh, EXE by Markiplier. 
And yeah, it's playing at the same time. We can fast forward. Sure. Um, let's open up another video. How about um, the Dark Mode podcast, Luke Miani? Are they still doing it? Oh man, so we're watching this live. But anyway, um, yeah, that loaded at the same time. We can open up a Linus video. Opened at the same time. Yeah, uh, again here, I'm seeing the trend of the internet is the only bottleneck. Next up, we're going to open up Spotify. This is another app that I use quite a bit during school and just in general life. I'm sure you do too. Three, two, one. Yeah, once again, it seems that the internet is what is, I guess, controlling how fast things open up here. Maybe a little quicker that time. We can do it one more time just to see if it's like best two out of three. Three, two, one. A little quicker on the iPad 8th gen to no one's surprise because the processor is a bit newer, but yeah, it's a negligible difference, I think. Um, we can start, I'm not gonna actually play any copyrighted music, but this is a Your Library page here. ABBA is one of the greatest bands ever, by the way. Just discovered that, I'm a young person. Um, so all of the older people in the audience can just be like, man, how'd you not know that? Um, but anyway, that's Spotify for you there. Next up, let's open up Safari, the default browser on the iPad here in three, two, one. And that loaded a little bit quicker on the iPad uh, ninth gen. Let's make a new tab here and load the Apple website in three, two, one. Negligible difference again, internet speed seems to dictate how fast things load here. Yep, same thing as well. We can scroll through and scroll to this article right here. Yeah, again, maybe a tad bit slower there, but yeah, it seems that both are pretty much the same here, which is again, as I continue to say, great for iPad 8th gen users who just wanna use their iPad for everyday tasks. Once again, this video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. And for those of you potentially switching over to an M1 MacBook Air or Mac users in general, if you're looking to speed up, optimize, and protect your Apple computer, this program might be for you. Over time, any new Mac gets clogged up with redundant files and background data buildup. With the smart scan feature, in a matter of seconds, Clean My Mac X can examine your volume to rid of any file clutter and unneeded cache files, as well as run optimization tasks and quickly check for malware. Space Lens is another great feature which allows you to identify which files are taking up the most space on your computer so you can more easily free up disk space for your creative projects or work in general. Clean My Mac X also has an optimization feature which allows you to manage power hungry tasks with ease, opposed to using the very technical system activity monitor. And finally, with the malware removal feature, Clean My Mac X can scan your Mac for and instantly annihilate cryptocurrency miners, viruses, and adware. Click my link in the video description to download a free trial today. All right, next up, let's open an app that is currently saving my life as I try to be in college and do YouTube at the same time. Notion in three, two, one. All right, so that seemed about the same here. We can try that again just to make sure of that. Three, two, one. Maybe a little bit quicker. Yeah, it seems to function the exact same way here, which is good. But yeah, a Notion pretty much operates the same way. I don't think you necessarily need the extra performance boost to do so, uh, or to at least run the app very nicely. So let's close it. Next up, let's open an app a lot of you are probably using with this tablet, Microsoft Word in the productivity folder that I created here in three, two, one. A little quicker on the iPad ninth gen here, let's load one of the templates here. How about a brochure in three, two, I have to sign in, come on. So it rendered the page a little quicker. Again, a product of the A13 being a tad better, or at least a tad better and with regard to daily tasks like this. But yeah, here we are. How about we edit the brochure title here, which for some reason looks really messed up. Um, this is a title. This is a title. Yeah, no difference in terms of typing there. We can bold this as well. Hello, bold. We can do some bold over here too, yeah. Um, at least when it comes to typing out a document, no difference at all, but opening them up, tad quicker with the ninth gen. And having opened Word, let's open up PowerPoint as well in three, two, one. So a little quicker on the ninth gen iPad here, let's load up the Berlin. Why does it ask me to sign in? What the heck? Um, let's do that. Again, same thing with PowerPoint, a little quicker on here as well, but type in here, type in there. 
there's no difference. Once again, it rendered the actual slideshow quicker, but um, yeah, in terms of actually interacting with it, I cannot tell the, any difference at all, to be honest. The last app that we're gonna launch here is LumaFusion, and we will come back to this and do a video editing comparison or render comparison, but because this app has a lot to open up, a lot of files to draw on, let's just see if there's any difference in three, two, one. About the same, okay, and it was loading. So there you go, um, apps open up pretty much at the same time on both these devices. It seems like the A12 has enough power to do so. Um, so cool, the more you know. So now that we have all these apps open, let's see um, if any of them need to refresh here. I am almost positive that both of these have the same amount of RAM. In fact, I'm going to open up Geekbench, which we'll later you know, run a benchmark with, um, to see that if this is true. So we got 2.88 gigs here and 2.87 gigs here. So yeah, pretty much the same case. Uh, so let's close that and see. We'll scroll all the way back here and see if any of, the, if any of these need to refresh. Apple News, nope. All right, how about App Store? Both of them had to refresh this. All right, um, let's go back. How about we do YouTube? Yeah, both of them had to refresh that. Yeah, I think three gigs of RAM is not quite enough to keep a ton of apps open. And last up, let's do Amazon. Both of them had to refresh as well. So yeah, it seems like they're on the same page even with the newer processor on the inside here. All right, next up, I want to demo multitasking, which is a big feature in iPad OS 15. So let's open up Safari first up here. We can load this New York Times page. I can actually close this little sidebar here to make it full screen. And then we can bring in, let's just say, how about GoodNotes onto the left here. So yeah, uh, I don't see any difference in latency here. It all looks about the same, um, you know, in terms of scrolling and interaction. Also shout out to Paperleg. It makes the note taking experience on an iPad screen so much better. Glossy glass is not really where it's at, I think, with Apple Pencil tips. So check out uh, their screen protectors linked in the video description. If you buy one, it also helps the channel as well. We can also obnoxiously move the little center thing and see if that makes a difference here. Yeah, not really about the same experience. We can also bring in a small little tab of YouTube in the carousel view. There we go. Scroll around, bring it up, send it away. Also close out Safari, zoom in. Uh, yeah, even though this doesn't cover every multitasking situation, seems to be similar. So with the everyday tasks out of the way, which as we saw performed pretty similarly across the A12 and A13, now let's do some benchmarking here. I have closed out all the apps. Uh, and honestly, I don't really think I need to because I'm gonna compare the Geekbench results that I got yesterday because I don't think they're gonna be that different um, compared to today. But yeah, let's open up on the history that I have for the CPU benchmarks here. Um, so we can go to the most recent, September 17th, 2021. And as you can see here, there is some modest gains in single core, um, 1331 compared to 111.5. Uh, 1115, why did I say it like that? But as you can see, I think that explains why everyday tasks and app openings are pretty much the same here because those scores are very, very similar. Um, but when it comes to multi-core scores that we have, let's just see, um, let me do some quick math on my Apple Watch because I am horrible at it and yeah, it's a fun time in college for me. 753 point gain, which is definitely substantial enough to make a difference in terms of maybe gameplay and also maybe some video editing. Now let's touch on GPU scores though, and this is where it gets interesting. Um, I sort of draw a parallel to the current situation with the A14 and the A15. Um, from what I've heard in terms of benchmarks and stuff, the CPU performance is not that much different, but the GPU performance with the A15 is a lot better or at least substantially better. And that seems to be the case here um, between the A12 and the A13. We have a, what, nearly 2000 point lead here, or about a 1900 point lead. Um, in terms of better GPU performance with the A13, which should make a difference in gameplay, which should also possibly make a difference in GPU accelerated tasks, like maybe video editing. So that is something to note as well. And again, these tablets both have the same amount of RAM. And another thing to note is that the A13 is clocked a little faster, so it's a little more powerful, a little more refined, ran, running a little faster. So. Yeah, uh, with that out of the way, now let's move on to the Antutu benchmarks, which I also did yesterday. 
And going into the breakdown, as you can see, we can see that CPU scores are fairly similar, 130,000-ish compared to 140,000-ish. Uh, GPU scores are definitely different, 210-ish thousand compared to 270,000, so again, substantial gains there. Memory is a little better. Also, UX is a little bit better, but not by much. And yeah, this basically explains what we were seeing in terms of just opening apps and such. The A13 and the A12 are a lot more similar than uh, I guess the A10 and the A12 were last year. But beyond the general test though, the storage test is where things get a little interesting. Not only does the iPad 9th gen have more storage, but apparently it has faster, better storage because I got a score of 30,876 compared to 20,803, a pretty significant gain, I would say. Um, so sequence read with the iPad 8th gen was 723 megabits per second. Sequence write was 368 compared to 837 read and 793 write. So more equal read and write speeds, which may also contribute to opening apps a little faster too. So yeah. Um, very interesting here. I'm glad that I did this test as well. Next up, I want to do a creative test. One of two, actually, because I'm going to do a video editing test in a minute here. But we are going to open up Lightroom, an app that I like to use on my iPad from time to time to edit some raw photos. And we can open up the raw photo that I was looking at uh, the other day. This is a thumbnail that I'm working on right now. Uh, so we can zoom in. I'm not seeing any difference there in terms of performance. We can also do exposure there. Is it reacting the same way? I think so. Maybe it's a little more immediate with the, uh... yeah, it seems to be a tad bit more immediate with the um, iPad 9th gen in here. Well, pretty similar. Maybe just a tad bit more delayed. Maybe it's in my head. I don't know, but um, it seems like both these tablets are decent for photo editing. Maybe we can add some sharpening, so detail. We can do some noise reduction. Cool, we can zoom in there as well. Um, we can also do, uh, how about uh, adding sharpness? So I added that, it was pretty much instant, same here. Yeah, I would say the video, or the, excuse me, the photo editing experience in Lightroom is fairly similar as well. I think it's more of a single core oriented task anyway. Um, so cool, let's uh, move on here. On to the LumaFusion test which should be the most interesting. I think this is gonna be the most telling in terms of an extreme example using all the cores and the increased multi-core scores here. So we can open up LumaFusion once again, which has to be refreshed. And here we have a video project, the same one. I actually started it on one of these iPads and copied it over. In terms of playback, it seems like both are doing quite well. Even playing some uh, clips that have been slowed down because they were shot at a higher frame rate, like this one, for example, I think was shot at 120 FPS, so I can play it here. And uh, yeah, both are doing a really nice job here, 30 FPS, uh, cool. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to add stabilization to one of these shots here, just to see which one does a better job, because this might take advantage of the GPU in the A13. Lock and load. And let's start it from the beginning and see if there's any difference in terms of playback. Nice, seems to have stabilized pretty evenly, I would say. Again, great for iPad 8th gen users. It seems like the A12 is still holding up very, very well. Um, and then since I already edited this project and added some color correction, we can actually export it. And this, I guess, will be the most telling test to see how much of a difference the A13 makes. We're gonna export uh, 3840 by 2160 at ultra 150 megabits per second, 30 FPS, HAVC, H.265, all the same settings here. It's uh, estimated to be 2.58 gigs and we will see which one does it first in three i believe two one start all right and it seems like the ipad 9th gen is winning the export contest by a very slim margin and that makes sense here but just like i saw with the ipad pros between the a12z and the m1 this, it's just not that much of a difference. Um, but yeah, I think this is more so due to just the A12 and the A13 being pretty similar uh, compared to the iPad Pro situation, which has to do more with optimization because the M1 chip is very much more powerful uh, compared to the A12X uh, on paper at least, but in terms of everyday use or just like, you know, the optimization situation, not quite yet, but yeah. Um, what is the last thing I'm gonna do here on the list? 
Um, oh, let's play a game, and uh, we're gonna open up an app that I think is gonna really make use of the GPU, and that is Genshin Impact, a game that so many of you wanted me to play on the iPad Pro, so I brought it here. Um, so we'll open that up. This game better load faster. I'm gonna actually, oh, okay, so we loaded in first onto the ninth gen. Interesting, maybe it's because of the A13, maybe it's because of the faster storage. Um, so here we are, we got some motion blur happening here, some stuttering and lagging a little bit, but actually not bad. Um, we're still loading in on the iPad 8th gen. Hopefully it's, not, okay, there we are, here we are. Um, so actually let me um, zoom in here at a similar angle. You know what I'm noticing? I tried to find graphic settings in this game and I couldn't for the life of me. I am not seeing motion blur here, yet I am seeing it here and maybe that is a product of the GPU. So let me actually go over here. It's lagging a tiny bit, um, but still things are looking good. Yeah, it's all right here. I wouldn't say it's a consistent 60 FPS, but it's still a playable experience. Whereas on here, it seems a little smoother. Am I getting the same sunlight effect here? Yeah, I am. But again, the motion blur is not happening. The motion blur is happening over here. Yeah, I'm glad I opened this app because it's very telling. I think like other apps might not be able to sort of show this, but yeah, it seems like the GPU in the A13 is uh, significantly better. Um, so if you are a gamer, um, you will benefit from this added performance. And now that we're done uh, testing this iPad, we can check out the battery life here. Now, I wasn't perfect. This iPad was on a little bit more, especially in the periods that my camera's overheated and I had to take a, a breather to just like, you know, uh, pause. But um, yeah, we're at 84% here and 89% here. That is with this sort of margin of error and also depreciation or at least uh, loss of integrity um, over the year that I've had this. So that's interesting. At least the battery um, efficiency is similar and that makes sense because the processor architecture here is very similar and the battery sizes are very similar. All right, referencing my notes, I see wrap up thoughts and I know exactly what to say here. Um, these tablets perform very similarly or more so the A12 and the A13 perform very similarly. They're cut from the same stone. They got the same processor architecture like I just said, albeit the GPU performance as shown in Geekbench with the compute scores and in Genshin Impact, which definitely does tax the uh, processors here, it's better. So if you're gonna be gaming, great, you're gonna have a bit of a better experience here, or you'll be able to unlock some, you know, visuals like motion blur and Genjin Impact like we just saw. Um, but yeah, for everyday tasks though, I can't notice it. For video editing, which is more CPU intensive, I don't notice it that much because again, the CPU scores are fairly similar, although the A13 is a bit better. But yeah, what does this mean for you? Well, if you want a baseline iPad and you just wanna do baseline stuff or not baseline stuff, just regular everyday stuff, just like web surfing, cloud stuff, streaming, and you don't need storage, like let's just say like you literally just access the web, buy the iPad 8th gen, you can find them new, they're stockpiled somewhere like Walmart, Best Buy, Amazon, they're even cheaper now. Um, but if you want a game, if you want the um, uh, camera on here, which is definitely better, especially for Zoom calls and stuff, it does really improve your video chatting experience. If you want double the storage, like I may have just said, I'm so tired, I'm like, I hope that I'm not repeating myself. Um, and if you want True Tone, which I think is a very nice feature, it does make a difference. I much prefer to have a display with True Tone. It just looks gross without it if you look at it side by side. By all means, buy the iPad 9th gen. It's gonna be discounted anyway, um, it's cheap. And uh, yeah, you just get the added GPU performance, once again, the better camera. And it's brand new, you know, you don't have to worry about finding one used or refurbished or open box or whatever, because that's gonna be the case for the iPad 8th gen. Um, so yeah, it is a modest upgrade for sure. It is definitely not um, as big of a jump compared to last year and the year before, and even then those weren't the biggest jumps. Um, Apple's strategy with this tablet is very interesting. I think this is a product of a lack of competition with Android tablets. Um, and I'm not trying to be biased. I'm not trying to be a biased Apple user. I just think that iPads are so much more popular, even for people that use Android phones because of the software. Um, so Apple can stick with a design that is like what, almost like nearing nine, 10 years old now. This is literally the iPad Air first generation, just repackaged and made a bit bigger and you know, included with the newer processor and better cameras, blah, blah, blah.
but it's amazing that this tablet has looked the same for a while. But nonetheless, it's a great value. You can not go wrong with either of these, although I would probably recommend the ninth gen, not because I'm a shill for Apple, but because you do get more storage on the inside. I don't think 32 gigs is enough anymore, but I digress. Thank you for watching this performance comparison. I hope it answered any and all questions you have about these tablets. I would really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.